Namaste. Blessed love and peace. It's Jay. This is a one-hour walkthrough of the Dignakaya, the Long Discourses of the Buddha. Volume 3. Numero 3. 3. 3. Um, again, translation from uh, Rhys David. Polytext Society. Uh, big up to Max Mueller. Uh, one one consideration is that in the first volume we see uh, the discourses that others have with the Buddha, uh, teachers of other schools, Brahmins, challengers, critics, students of his own of the Buddha's own, uh, and so that's that's much of uh, the, the the first volume. And again, much of it is a uh, um, the Buddha refers to the basic teachings that the Buddha provides, uh, that are articulated within the first and the second uh, sutta. In the second volume, um, there is uh, the description of preceding Buddhas. There is the description of uh, the Buddha's attainment of Nibbana, the six chapters of that sutta. Um, there are a number of conversations with angels. And then there are also some conversations that others have with the students of the Buddha. And in this order, I'm advised to... Stop, yo, the back situation. But we're going to continue because we're dealing with light at the moment. Um, so we're going to be stiller. Be stiller. Um, the third volume deals with uh, a lot of the s summaries and repetition and references to the basic teachings of the Buddha. Um, it's organized um, in, in, in particularly in numeric um, 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 mnemonics, a way of remembering uh, the teachings, and it gets into further detail. Um, there's new insight into these same teachings that's shared, uh, further explanation, further cause and effect, and addition. So, uh, that's some of what's included within this third volume. So now we begin. <laughs> Blessing. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahu Akbar. Dao ke dao fe chong dao min ke min fe chong ni ja rastafari. Deus nos te kies in shala song kata kita no mentu vahe guru sama. Baruchata Elohim Eloheinu Melechalam Asher Kitzanu Baruch Kitzanu Baruch Kitzanu Baruch Kitzanu Baruch Kitzanu Baruch Kitzanu Amen Kiri Eleison Sevo Mastu Savajikatehi Sabe Sata Bavantu Sukitata Barabiyam Akwaba Ukendona Aman Fekiri Nesamani Chinta Dan Peramein Leibo Vanero Majaba Umbuntu Shubono Fekirtu Sheshet Kamasini Dandomo Aragato Yellow walk and talk, talk a look, shingo, and go my gun, go with and keep all the jibosas. Ata jam yat yata akamani. Ado, the ho, om shanti shanti shanti. So, this volume thress, volume three, includes the suttas numbered. 24 uh, 34. If I correctly. Um, there should be a table of contents here. That's what I'm looking for. Here it is. Yes, so. Um, Sutta 24 on to Sura uh, Sutta 34. We begin here this session with uh, Sutta 24, the Petika Suttanta. Uh, and we continue on with thus have I heard. The Exalted One was once staying amongst the Malas at Anupiya. 
one of their towns. Now the exalted one, having robed himself in the early mantan, put on his cloak and took his bow and entered the town for alms. And he thought, it is too early for me now to go through Unapia for alms. I might go to the pleasurance where Bhagava the wanderer dwells and call upon Bhagava. So the exalted one went to the pleasurance and to the place where Bhagava the wanderer was. Um, so Bhagava uh, invites the exalted one to sit down um, and have a uh, conversation. Um, Bhagava makes reference to Sunakata, another uh, ascetic who leaves the, the Buddha Sangha. And so Bhagava asks why that is. And so um, the Buddha, at first to, to confirm if that's accurate and then to discern why that is. So then uh, the Buddha says it is accurate uh, and the, uh, the, the ascetic Sunakata um, told the Buddha this, and the Buddha said, well, I never told you to be my disciple to begin with. Um, and so then after that, uh, Sunakata undauntingly says, well, uh, the Buddha didn't provide any, the Sunakata with any mystic wonders. Um, and uh, the Buddha says, I never told you I would. Um, and so... Um, Basically, the response of the Buddha here is in chapter 4. Um, Why now, Sunakata, have I ever said to you, come, take me as your teacher, Sunakata, and I will work for you, mystic wonders, surpassing the power of ordinary men? You have not, sir. Or have you ever said to me, sir, I would fain take the exalted one as my teacher, for he will work for me, mystic wonders, beyond the powers of ordinary men? I have not, sir. But if I said not the one, and you said not the other, what are you and what am I, foolish man, that you talk of giving up? What think you, Sunakata, whether mystic wonders beyond the power of ordinary men are wrought or whether they are not? Is the object for which I teach the Dhamma this, that it is that it leads to the thorough destruction of ill for the doer thereof? Whether, sir, they are so wrought or not, that is indeed the object for which the Dharma is taught by the Exalted One. If then, Sunakata, it matters not to the, uh, that object whether mystic wonders are wrought or not, of what utilization to you would be the working of them? See, foolish one, in how much the fault here is your own. And then Sunakata describes the Buddha not providing an explanation at the beginning of things. And the Buddha says again, that has little to do with the methodology for attaining enlightenment. Um, so, then there's the Buddha references a history between Sunakata and the Buddha. Um, and describing how Sunakata used to say a lot of things in honor of the Buddha. Um, and then, uh, then Sunakata um, started following somebody else, um, and and um, the Buddha described how the fa the futility of the practice of the other person that Sunakata championed, and it eventually comes to pass. Um, it's a naked ascetic, um, and um, all those things that Sunakata is 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 um, impressed with from the naked ascetic. Um, the Buddha says all that means little. Um, here's, here's how you can expect that, that process to conclude. And it concludes in that way. Um, and so, um, Sunakata is further dismayed. Um, the Buddha provides further explanation um, to the... To the um, contrary of Sunakata's proclamations. Um, and there's this interesting, um, this interesting narrative. So, um, in this, um, There is reference to another ascetic whose name is Patika, or actually Patika's son. Um, and in this scenario, Patika's son uh, basically calls out the Buddha and says, "The Buddha thinks he's nice. I have knowledge. Uh, whatever, whatever, like mystic wonder he performs, I'll perform twice. If he performs two, I'll perform four. Da 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 da." 
um, but basically he's denouncing the Buddha um, and and doing this in the in front of everybody, doing it in front of all of the elders and and, and the, the the leaders. Um, and so Sunakata is is being somewhat of the the stir upper and and uh, starts to champion the Patika son's cause. Uh, and the word gets to the Buddha, and the Buddha says, Patika son is incompetent. Um, and uh, if he continues saying that, um, and, and, and he were to try to meet me, his head would split in two. Um, and so now, okay, now the challenge is on. The Buddha has responded. The Buddha, he's not trying to throw shade, but he's just saying, like, he's given his response. So now, in the arena of, of um, the... Um, the middlers, the meddlers, um, there is there is excitement, and so now, um, at one point, um, Sunukata warns the Buddha, saying, um, "That's pr that's a pretty harsh statement, right there. You might want to take that back." And and the Buddha is like, "It's not even a question." And Sunukata says, "How do you know? Um, have you meditated and, and learned it, or has some angel told you?" And, and the Buddha says, "Both." Um, so. So then what happens is that one day the Buddha uh, decides to go into the place where Patika's son uh, usually goes. And, and at that time, Patika's son is located elsewhere. He gets word of it. Somebody tells him and um, he's frozen. He can't move. Um, and, and the people say, yo, go, go. You said you're going to do this. Go do it. We're, we got your back. Go and do it. And he cannot move. He cannot move from his seat. Um, and so the Buddha is, is still sitting in, his, in, in Patika son's spot waiting for him and people are around him waiting for it to happen um, and, the Gautam, and, both, and the Buddha says, I told you, he's, un, he's incompetent to face me because um, if he did, he would split in two. Um, and and um, so then additional people go to tell that guy, tell, tell Patika son, yo, we got your back, we got your back. You said all this, you were talking that, come on, we got your back. Uh, go and go and handle your business. He doesn't. He doesn't move. Um, it basically says um, again. This is in chapter one. Um, Very well, said that man, consenting, and he went to the Tinduka Pollards, the Wanderer's Park, found Patika San, and gave him the message. When this was told him, Bhagavad, the naked ascetic, Patika San, saying, I am coming, friend, I am coming, writhed about then and there, and was unable to rise from his seat. This is verse 21. Then he said to the, then said the man to him, How now, friend, Patika San, are your hams stuck to your seat, or is your seat stuck to your hams? You say, I'm coming, friend, I am coming, yet you writhe about and are not able to rise from your seat. And though this was said to him, Patika's son repeated, I am coming, friend, I am coming, but only writhe about, unable to rise. Now, when the man recognized Patika's son's discomfiture, hearing his words and seeing his incapacity, he went to the assembly and told them, saying, The naked ascetic Patika's son seems discomfited. He says, I am coming, friend, I am coming, but he only writhes about as he sits and is unable to get up. At these words, Bhagavad, I said to the assembly, Incompetent, friends, is the naked ascetic Patika son to meet me face to face. If he withdraw not those words, if he put not away that idea, if he renounce that, not that opinion. If he thinks that holding to those words, to that idea, maintaining that opinion, he would come to meet the Samana Gotama, his head would split asunder. And that's the conclusion of chapter one. Chapter dos begins um, again with, with a, the, one of the further leaders uh, from the assembly going to talk with uh, Patika son. Same situation. Um, and another one uh, uh, leaves and to talk with Patika son. Uh, same situation. And this person, uh, whose name is Jalia, um, won't, won't give slack to Patika son. Uh, he, he refers Patika son to a jackal. Uh, and there's it, it, this is this is the, the um, narration from verse five, chapter two, um, of Patika's Patika Sutta. Um, now, when Jalia Woodenbull's pupil recognized the ascetic's discomfiture, he spake to him thus: Long ago, friend Patika's son, this idea occurred to the lion, king of the beasts. What if I were to make my lyre near a certain jungle, so that in the evening I could issue from my lair and stretch myself and survey the landscape and thrice roar a lion's roar? and go forth towards the cattle pastures. 
I could slay the pick of the herd of beasts, feast on a continual diet of tender flesh, and get me back to that same lair. Then the lion friend chose his lair and did according to his desire. Now, friend Patikasan, there was an old jackal who had continually thriven on the remains of that lion's food and was stout and strong, and it occurred to him, Who am I and who is lion, king of the beasts? What if I were to choose my lair near a certain jungle so that in the evening I could issue from my lair and stretch myself and survey the landscape and thrice roar a lion's roar and go forth towards the cattle pastures? I could slay the pick of the herds of beasts, feast on a continual diet of tender flesh, and get me back to that same lair. Now, friend, that old jackal chose his lair and did according to his desire. And coming forth in the evening and stretching himself and surveying the landscape, he thought, Thrice will I roar a lion's roar, and thereat he roared a jackal's howl, a vulpine howl. Would you compare a vile jackal's howl with a lion's roar? Even so, you, friend Patikasan, living amongst the exploits of the welfare, feeding on food left over after the welfare has been served, fancy you can reach up to those who are Tathagatas, Arahas, Buddha Supreme. Why, what have wretched Patika's sons in common with Tathagatas, Arahas, Buddha Supreme? So even then after that, still cannot move. Um, then then um, Jalia goes even further in detail about that metaphor, about that parable, and still cannot move. Um, So at that point, um, the Buddha just gives a discourse to the people who are, who are around him um, and provides an, um, a mystic wonder um, and so basically satisfies all of the solicitations that are made upon him and, um, and says, okay, there it is. Um, in, in verse 14, uh, he, the Buddha goes on to describe the ultimate beginning of things I know, Bhagavad. And I know not only that, but further than that, and whilst I know that, I do not pervert it. And as one not perverting it, I even of myself have understood that peace, the which realizing a Tathagata can fall into no error. Uh, so uh, the Buddha goes on to describe um, previous challenges and, and uh, descriptions concerning this knowledge. Um, and proclamations about the beginnings of things and further. Um, there's a description of uh, Brahma, and there's the consideration of Brahma being the Brahman that is described within um, the Bhagavad Gita and otherwise. Actually, Brahma is one of the elements, the celestial elements of the ultimate reality. Um, the Brahma and uh, Basically, the three elements of, um, of creation, uh, preser preservation, and destruction. Um, but in the way that Brahma is described in the context of the Pali Canon, particularly here in the Dika Nikaya, uh, it can be understood as a, in a similar way as a, a celestial portent of the ultimate reality. Uh, and so here, there's the proclamation of this being the ultimacy when there is... An awareness of, of something that exists beyond what is being proclaimed um, and the persona the 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 proclamations that are communicated from this persona this this celestial portent are distinct from what is described within other teachings from Bhagavad Gita and otherwise um, so it's appropriate to recognize it in that context so that being said um, there's a description between the conversation between the Buddha and this celestial portent. Um, and the Buddha basically describes the comparative insignificance of those proclamations about the beginning of things and, and further that again it's the righteousness it's it's the discipline um, that is paramount and so even though there's a knowledge of these things um, it's, it's a matter of simply uh, of, of abstaining from simply um, pandering or catering or responding to solicitations of from others to to uh, to have those discussions and have those explanations 
uh, because doing so often or uh, essentially detracts from focus on the practice of the discipline. Um, one way the Buddha describes this is in, towards the conclusion of the sutta. Um, Verse 21, now I, Bhagavad, being of such an opinion, certain recluses and Brahmins have falsely, emptily, mendaciously, and unfairly accused me, saying, Gotama, the recluse, is all wrong, and so are his big shoes. He has said, whenever one has attained to the stage of deliverance and title of the beautiful, one then considers all things repulsive, as repulsive. But this, Bhagavad, I have not said. What I do say is this, whenever one attains to the stage of deliverance and title of the beautiful, one is then aware it is lovely. So then Bhagavad proclaims the teachings of the Buddha and that is the conclusion of the Patika Sutta. On to Vientisinko, the Unda Barika Sahanada Sutta. Uh, thus have I heard. The Exalted One was once staying near Rajagaha on the Vulture's Peak. Now at that time there was a sojourning in Queen Undumbarika's, Undumbarika's Park, assigned to the wanderer, the wanderers, the wanderer Negroda, together with a great company of the wanderers, of wanderers, even 3,000. So there is an initial conversation between Negroda and Sandana, who is a householder. Negroda is a wanderer and Sandana is a householder. Um, there's a lot of loud talk about insignificant things. And eventually um, the Buddha arrives and there's solicitation for, for quiet so the Buddha will join. Uh, the Buddha joins and... Actually, it's a, it's a, okay, a little bit, a little bit distinct from that. Um, Sandana is a householder who is a follower of the Buddha. Um, and is, it's too early to call upon the Buddha, so he goes on his own. And the grow to see Sandana and summon Sandana to talk about the Buddha. Um, and so that, that is the nature of the conversation. Um, and when Sandana, Sandana arrives at that place, Sandana comments about the loud talk and, and, and everything else. And uh, from that, um, Nagroda takes offense. Um, in, in verse 4, um, Sandana says, uh, different is the way in which these reverend wanderers holding views of their own talk when they have met and are come together from the practice of the exalted one. They talk with loud voices, with noise and clamor, carrying on childish talk of various kinds, to wit, dot, 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 further examples, on existence and non-existence. But the exalted one haunts the lowly and remote recesses of the forest, where noise, where sound there hardly is, where the breezes from the pastures blow, wet yet which are hidden from the eyes of men suitable for self-communing. And then it continues on with chapter uh, verse 5. And when Sandana had spoken, Negroda to him made answer, Look you now, householder, know you with whom the Samana Gotama talks, with whom he holds conversation, by intercourse with whom he does he attain to lucidity and wisdom. The Samana Gotama's insight is ruined by his habit of seclusion. He is not at home in conducting an, an assembly. He is not ready in conversation. He is, not, he is occupied only with the fringes of things. Even as a one-eyed cow, that walking in a circle follows only the outskirts. So is the Samana Gotama. Why, forsooth, householder, if the Samana Gotama were to come to this assembly with a single question, only could we settle him. Yea, methinks we could roll him over like an empty pot. Strong words. And so then that's when the Exalted One arrives, hearing uh, the, the proclamations. Um, and then Negroda beckons the Exalted One to approach. And so then there's the, the conversation between Negroda and the Exalted One. Um, so the, the Negroda, Negroda asks the Buddha a question um, about the, the, the Buddha's teaching. 
Um, and the Buddha says it's a little bit difficult for people of different schools to, to, to like recognize. Um, then the Buddha says, Nagoda asked me a question about your doctrine um, and, and like, um, and, and we'll talk about that. And so everybody's like, oh, that's awesome. He's going to talk about his, the other person's doctrine. So um, then Nagoda just describes the, the practice of ascetics and all the different austerities that, are, that the Buddha considers comparatively insignificant. Um, all the different, uh, some examples include um, having loose habits, lifting his hands, um, accepting nothing expressly brought, um, not accepting anything from two eating together, nor from a pregnant woman, nor from a nursing war, nor from a woman in intercourse with a man, nor food collected in drought, nor from, from where a dog is, on and on and on and on about all these different details. Um, and so, So the Buddha says there's there's still a fault within within these practices. Um, there's one of the criticisms that the Buddha describes as self complacency that in doing those things a person might feel satisfied in terms of completing a, a spiritual discipline and thus not worry about further things that are significant things that are further significant. Um, and even in doing that, despising uh, others who don't do it, um, and, and, and further criticism. So, um, so then, the, after na naming a number of these criticisms, uh, hypocrisy, jealousy, and things that come from those practices, um, the Buddha asks the, the Grota if, if that's accurate, and the, and the Grota says, actually, yeah, that's right. Um, then um, the Buddha describes um, a practitioner who doesn't do those things. And um, in, in verse 15, it says, And again, when the Tathagata or a disciple of the Tathagata teaching the Dhamma utilizes a method worthy of appreciation, he appreciates it. And he does not lose his temper or bear enmity. He does not become hypocritical or, and deceitful, envious and grudging, cunning and crafty, hard-hearted and vain. He does not entertain evil wishes or become captive to them. He does not entertain false opinions or become possessed of meta-empirical dogma, does not pervert experience, is not avaricious and averse from enunciation in not being becoming infected by empiricism, not being avaricious, given to renunciation, to that degree does he become purified. But think you, to that degree does he become purified. But think you, Nagoda, that being so, does the austerity by these things become genuinely pure or not? Verily, Master, the austerity of these things becomes genuinely pure and not impure. It wins the topmost rank. It reaches the pit. And then the Buddha says, not yet. Uh, it goes further. So, um... And then the Buddha talks about self-restraint, um, the fourfold watch. Um, actually, and, and that's a reference to the Panchasila, um, less the the fifth um, ethic of uh, intoxication or in, in concerning sobriety. Um, then there's reference to the five hindrances. Uh, the love for the four quarters of the world. Um, and still not the pit, still not, still not the topmost. Um, then the Buddha describes the same uh, path, the uh, same uh, process of finding a, a lonely place, meditating, um, a little bit in a distinct sequence because he already makes reference to having love for the four quarters of the world. Um,
So then uh, the Buddha describes the topmost uh, topmost rank. Um, Uh, basically, thus Nagoda does austerity win topmost rank and reach the pith. And so Nagoda, when you say to me, what master is this religion of the Exalted One, wherein he trains his disciples, and which those disciples so trained by the Exalted One as to win comfort, acknowledge to be their utmost support and the fundamental principle of righteousness, I say that it is a matter of a higher and further excellent degree, wherein I train my disciples, so that they so trained by me therein as to find comfort, acknowledge it to be their utmost support and the fundamental principle of righteous living. So that concludes the Buddha's address to to uh, to uh, Nagroda, and from there, um, there's there's celebration, um, and then um, when when there's celebration of what the Buddha teaches, then said Sandana, the householder who was part of the original conversation, um, said, "Oh wait a minute, what were you saying at the beginning then?" Um, and and uh, repeats what what, what Nagroda said at the beginning about rolling the uh, the Buddha over like an empty pot. Uh, and the Buddha says, did you actually say that? And the Buddha said, yeah. Um, and so, uh, so Nagoda apologizes, um, and, uh, the Buddha describes that um, in verse 22, um, But I, Nagoda, say to you this, Let a man of intelligence come to me who is honest, candid, straightforward. I will instruct him. I will teach him the Dhamma. If he practice according as he is taught, then to know himself and to actualize even here and now that supreme religion and goal for which the, of the sake for the sake of which clansmen go forth from the house of life into the homeless state will take him seven years. Nay, Nagoda, let be the seven years. If he practice according as he is taught, and then the Buddha says, Six years, five years, four years, three years, two years, one year, six months, five months, four months, three months, two months, one month, half a month. Um, all the way to seven days. So the Buddha says, seven days. Um, that's that's what the Buddha prescribes in terms of, of living in the Sangha, in terms of uh, establishing the discipline of that the Buddha teaches. Um and then, interestingly enough, the Buddha also provides this this this, declara this declaration, um, and 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 uh, addresses like some concerns, uh, particularly concerning like from other rival schools or otherwise. Verse twenty three, Gyanti Thras. Maybe Nagoda, you will think the Samana Gotama has said this from a desire to get pupils, but you are not thus to explain my words. Let him who is your teacher be your teacher still. Maybe Nagoda, you will think the Samana Gotama has said this from a desire to make us secede from our rule, but you are not thus to explain my words. Let that which is your rule be your rule still. Maybe Nagoda, you will think the Samana Gotama has said this from a desire to make us secede from our mode of livelihood, but you are not thus to explain my words. Let that which is your mode of livelihood be so still. Maybe Nagoda, you will think the Samana Gotama has said this from a desire to confirm, confirm us as to such points of our doctrines as are wrong and reckoned as wrong by those in our community, but you are not thus to explain my words. Let those points in your doctrines which are wrong and reckoned as wrong by those in your community remain so still for you. Maybe Nagoda, you will think the Samana Gotama has said this from a desire to detach us from such points in our doctrines as are benevolent, reckoned as benevolent by those in our community, but you are not thus to explain my words. Let those points in your doctrines which are benevolent, reckoned to be benevolent by those in your community, remain so still. Um, wherefore, Nagoda, I speak thus neither because I wish to gain pupils, nor because I wish to secede, I wish seceding from rule, nor because I wish to cause... I speak thus neither because I wish to gain pupils, nor because I wish to cause seceding from rule, nor because I wish to cause seceding from mode of livelihood, nor because I wish to confirm you in bad doctrines or to detach you from benevolent doctrines. But, O oh, Nagoda, there are bad things not put away, corrupting, entailing, birth, renewal, bringing suffering, resulting in ill, making for its birth, decay, and death in the future. And it is for the putting away of these that I teach the Dhamma, according to which, if ye do walk, the things that corrupt shall be put away, the things that make for purity shall grow and flourish, and ye shall attain to and abide in each one for himself, even here and now, the understanding and the realization of full and abounding insight. So after that, it, uh, it's described that the people didn't get it. Um, and, and it is described as Mara, the tempter, arrives and, and uh, takes hold of those who are um, unready for what the Buddha shares.
That's the conclusion of the Udimbak, Udumbarika Sahanada Sutta. Uh, and thus we begin the next sutta, which is numero 26, the Chakavati Sahanada Sutta. And it begins thus, I've heard the exalted one was once staying in the land of the Magadis at Matula. Now there the exalted one addressed the brethren, saying, Brethren, and they made answer, Master. The exalted one spake thus, Live as islands unto yourselves, brethren, as refuges unto yourselves, taking no other as your refuge. Live with the Dhamma as your island, with the Dhamma as your refuge, taking no other as your refuge. But how, brethren, does a brother live as an island unto himself, as a refuge unto himself, taking no other as his refuge? How does he live with the Dhamma as his island, with the Dhamma as his refuge, taking no other refuge? Herein, brethren, a brother as to the body, as to the feelings, as to thought, as to ideas, continues so to look upon these that he remains, self, he remains ardent, self-possessed, and mindful, that he may overcome both the hankering and the dejection common in the world. Thus, brethren, does a brother live as an island unto himself, dot, 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 with the Dhamma as his dot, 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 refuge, taking no other as his refuge. Um, it continues on. Keep to your own pastures, brethren, and walk in the haunts where your fars roamed. If ye thus walk in them, the evil one will find no landing place, no basis of attack. It is precisely by the cultivation of benevolent qualities that this merit grows. So then the Buddha shares a story about a, a king named Strong Tire. Um, and here is the articulation of the seven, seven treasures. Um, it is uh, the wheel, the elephant, the horse, the gem, the woman, the house bar, and the counselor. Um, So again, this is this is the same. This is the narrative of um, this is the narrative of the wheel uh, and, and conquering the four quarters of the the realm, uh, similar as the preceding sutta. Uh, the difference of this one is that it, there's intergenerational uh, sequence here. So um, after after each king experiences that same thing, going around to each quarter, saying the Panchasilas, each the, all the kings of the other other four quarters respond favorably, um, and then, um, but the wheels begins to slip, and the, the, the information is that uh, when the wheel begins to slip, that means that the days of this king are, are, are coming to a close. It's for him to become a renunciant at that point and hand over the reins to his, his son, and that's what he does. And so he teaches his son uh, the precepts of righteousness, um, so that he can continue in that uh, in that way. Um, and uh, then the wheel disappears. And uh, when the wheel disappears, the new king is is sad. He goes to speak to the wanderer who who's as far and and lets him know. and and the wanderer says, "Don't worry. Uh, that that's not your fate. Continue on in, in how I how I describe. So that, that's what the king does. The wheel appears to him, the new king, and then he does the same thing to the east, to the south, to the west, to the north. Um, and it continues on, the second generation, and then the third generation. And it continues on in the same, pretty much the same exact sequence verbatim um, to the seventh generation, if I recall correctly. Um, I, I think it's the seventh generation. And, aha, it's a little bit too much. Fast forward. Um, so, um, yeah, it actually, so here it is in verse 8. It, and again, there's a lot of abbreviation with the dot, dot, dot. But it just says, A second king, brethren, also a wheel turner, turning monarch, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth, and a sixth, and a seventh king. A victorious war master, after many years, after many hundred years, after many thousand years, commanded a certain man. Um, and so then after that seventh king, um, then a certain man went and told this to the new king. Then the king, the king. Then the king, the anointed Kshaitra, was grieved at the disappearance of the wheel and afflicted with grief. But he did not go to the hermit king. He did not go to his far to ask concerning the Aryan duty of a sovereign war master. By his own ideas, forsooth, he governed his people, and they so governed differently from what they had been, did not prosper as they used to do under the former kings who had carried out the Aryan duty of a sovereign king. 
so he's told about this, um, and he still he's unable to, to rectify the circumstances. Uh, he's not malevolent, but he's just ignorant. Um, and then uh, poverty emerges, and then when poverty emerges, somebody's caught stealing. When he's caught stealing, uh, he's asked why he steals, and he says, the, the, theft, the thief says to live, and so the king says, well, here's money. He, he, you can go and live. So then people just started stealing, thinking that, oh, I'll just get money for, as a result. So then the, the king kills somebody. Um, because he says, if everybody just steals and I just give money, nah. so he, he actually executes somebody. And so now there's, uh, there's fear. And um, uh, so then... Uh, after, after that, people began lying about uh, stealing, so in order to avoid death, um, and then from lying, people started getting ugly, and then because people were ugly, people started sleeping with other people's wives, other men's wives, um, and uh, so there's adultery, and so um, basically. The, the people begin to act in the way that the king acts. Uh, the king uh, started killing people, people started killing people. Um, and people started lying. Uh, and, then, and then all these other um, um, malfeasances emerge within the, um, within the society so that uh, there's just so much deterioration uh, and, and, and just so much decay and corruption. Um, the, the people's lives begin to be, become shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, there's just violence and uh, just corruption in all types of ways um, that people are afraid to walk out the, out the door. Um, and then eventually it becomes so severe um, that people wake up and, and say, hey, let's, let's, try, to, let's try to be better. Um, and So here in verse 21, it says, Among such humans, brethren, there will arise a sword period of seven days, during which they will look on each other as wild beasts. Sharp swords will appear ready to their hands, and they, thinking this is a wild beast, this is a wild beast, will with their swords deprive each other of life. Then to some of those beings it will occur, let us not slay just anyone, nor let us let anyone slay us. Let us now, therefore, betake ourselves to dens of grass, or dens in the jungle, or holes in, tra in trees, or river fastnesses or mountain clefts and subsist on, subsist on roots and fruits of the jungle. And they will do so for those seven days. And at the end of those seven days, coming forth from those dens and fastnesses and mountain clefts, they will embrace each other and being of one accord, comforting one another and saying, Hail, O living being, that thou livest still. O happy sight to find thee still alive. Um, then this, brethren, will occur to those beings now only because we had gotten into evil ways have we had this heavy loss of kith and kin. Let us there... For now do benevolent. What can we do that is benevolent? Let us abstain from taking life. That is a benevolent thing that we may take up and do. And they will abstain from slaughter and they will continue in this benevolent way. Because of their getting into this benevolent way, they will increase again both as to their span of life and as to their comeliness. And to them thus increasing in life and comeliness, to them who have lived but one decade, there will be children who will live for 20 years. So then things get better and better and better. And when things get better and better and better to the point where they were at the beginning, um, it is actually living in the way that, um, in, in, that are the precepts that were described as the sovereign kingdom and the sovereign uh, discipline to begin with. Um, And uh, a king with the same seven treasures. Um, the Buddha then, and with uh, verse 27, again goes and says again, Live as islands unto yourselves, brethren, as refuges unto yourselves. Take no one other as your refuge. Live with the Dharma as your island, with the Dharma as your refuge. Take none other as your refuge. Um, It's pretty much the same description, the teaching as is described at the beginning. Um, so 
So to conclude uh, the teaching, the Buddha says, I consider no power, brethren, so hard to subdue as the power of Mara. Let this merit, the merit of these four groups of ethical concepts, beginning at right conduct and culminating in arahatship, expands, brethren, by the taking up into oneself of that which is benevolent. And that's the conclusion of the sutta. And the next one is Sutta Vienti Siete, the Aganya Sutta. Uh, it's referred to as the Book of Genesis. Um, So there are two, uh, two, two practitioners, the Vesita and Bharadvaja, and they go to talk with the Buddha. They are uh, Brahmins uh, by birth, um, but they've gone forth from the Brahmin life, and the Buddha asks about um, how hard it is. Um, and he says, uh, do not the Brahmins blame and revile you, looking at verse 3. And the response is, yea, verily, Master, the Brahmins do blame and revile us with characteristic abuse, copious, not at all stinted. And the Buddha says, but in what way, but in what words, Vesetta, do they so blame you? The Brahmins masters say thus, the Brahmin class is the best, but in what ways, Vesetta, do the Brahmins blame and censure you to this extent? Um, so then it um, goes into further detail about what the, the criticism that his followers receive. Um, and uh, the Buddha basically uh, admonishes that criticism um, and... Uh, describes the tenet of ethics uh, I've seen for murder, theft, and chastity, lying, slandering, gossip, greed, malevolence, and false opinions, looking at verse 6, um, and describes the, the attributes of the bhikshu. Um, So the Buddha goes into some of the, the distinctions between the Kshatriya, the Brahmins, um, and the, the experience of recognition amongst these, um, and how essentially the practitioner of the higher ethics and righteousness essentially receives the further recognition. Uh, the Buddha then describes uh, the, uh, 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 a narrative of origination, this being referred to as a book of Genesis. Uh, and describes how the angelic celestial beings become earthly beings by partaking of uh, the materiality of the natural universe. Uh, and then from that become um, further and further earthly um, and less resplendent um, as celestial beings. Uh, Then, as material beings, earthly beings, there is um, there begins to be that possessiveness of materiality, um, storing away um, first grazing on whatever is provided, the freshness of that, but then eventually um, hoarding things, storing things, and hoarding things, and then uh, competing, um, and then from in that competition becoming less and less um, uh, ethical, uh, further corrupt, and. Uh, that being where uh, the <clears throat> the devolution, the de-evolution, uh, dissolution of um, the walk occurs um, through through those um, through that corruption. Um, this is all described in a narrative. Um, of, of the beings who, who become increasingly earthly. Um, and so again, there's a similar, as in the preceding uh, sutta, there's a similar um, awakening um, and uh, referring and, and returning back to a, a, an increasingly benevolent and harmonious way of life. Um, and amidst that returning, um, there are those who can, can stand further austere disciplines than others, um, whether it's studies, whether it's meditation, um, and, and otherwise. And so 
the Buddha describes this as the this distinction of the varnas um, from from the from the Brahmins to the Kshatriyas to the Vaisyas to the Shudras, uh, based upon what each is capacity is to live in that level of austerity. Um, And, and the Buddha then again articulates that regardless of what an individual is born into, um, there's still the propensity of living a life of self-restraint and further. This is repeated um, with, uh, we can look at verse 30. Again, we say to a kasaitra, a brahmin to a vesa, a suda to, who is self-restrained in deed, word, and thought, and has followed after the practice of the seven principles, which are the wings of wisdom, attains to complete extinction of evil in this present life. For Vesita, whosoever of these four classes becomes a bhikshu, as a bhikshu and arahat, who has destroyed the intoxicants, who has done that which is it, what, who has done that which it behooved him to do, who has laid down the burden, who has won his own salvation, who has wholly destroyed the fetter of rebecoming, who through knowledge made perfect is free. He is declared chief amongst them in virtue of a dharma, not in the absence of a dharma. For Viseta, the dharma is the best amongst this folk, both in this life and in the next. So that essentially is the conclusion of the sutta, the Aganya sutta. Uh, and then continuing on to numero 28, the Sampasadaniya sutta, the faith that's satisfied is another uh, description, uh, translation of this. Begins thus have I heard. At one time the exalted one was staying near Nalanda, in the Pavarika mango wood. Now the Venerable Sariputta came to the place where the Exalted One was and having saluted him, took his seat respectfully at his side and said, Master, such faith have I in the Exalted One that methinks there has never been, nor will there be, nor is there now any other, whether Rekhus or Brahman, who is greater and wiser than the Exalted One, that is to say, as regards the higher wisdom. So then the Buddha says, yo, that's, that's big talk. How do you know that? You must know everything. Um, and Sariputta says, no, not so. Um, and, and, uh, the Buddha says, basically, you, you know all about the past. And, and the Sarpu says, no. He says, the Buddha says, you must know all about the future. No, you must know all about everything that is not today. No. Um, and, and the Sarpu just says that, that um, describes his knowledge about um, the, 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 the practice of the Buddha described as uh, somebody who's guarding the border around the city. Um, and having a wall and, and going all around the wall and knowing the, all of all the, the components of the wall and knowing that there's there's nothing of any particular size that's able to go through that wall um, and uh, describing it as like a cat being able to get through the wall. Um, that is how he describes his knowledge concerning the Buddha's uh, teachings. Um, so then from there, um, Sorry, Buddha describes those components of the Buddha's teachings. In verse 3, he says, uh, gives a listing of those teachings, which is beneficial uh, to recognize. Further, Master, this too is unsurpassed. The way, namely, in which the, the Exalted One teaches the Dharma concerning righteous doctrines. I mean, the four exercises in setting up mindfulness, the four supreme efforts, the four roads to saintship, the five virtues, the five virtuous powers, the five forces, the seven branches of enlightenment, the Aryan, the Aryan Eightfold Path, showing how a Bhikshu, by destruction of the intoxicants, may know and realize for himself, even in this life, sane and immune emancipation of intellect and intuition, and so attaining may therein abide. So then, uh, sorry, Buddha goes on to further talk about uh, the teachings of the Buddha. Uh, goes into some of the details concerning uh, the mindfulness of the anatomy Uh, going into the the um, the, theo the theological um, discussions the Buddha shares uh, concerning um, afterlife and further. And again, further summary of, of some of the teachings that the Buddha provides within his previous discussions amidst the suttas. Um, and and the, the confidence that is gleaned from, from those teachings and the truth revealed through those teachings. 
And then after saying all this in verse 20, Sariputta says to the Buddha, am I right? And, and the Buddha says, yeah, you're right. Um, so there's another uh, student who says, that's fantastic. And that's how it concludes. Then we get into uh, the Sutta numero 29, the Pasadika Sutta. Uh, that's if I heard the exalted one was once at was at one time sojourning amongst the Sakyans at the technical college in the mango grove of the Sakyan family named the Archers. Now at that time, Nataputa, the, the Nagata, had just died at Pava, and at his death, the Nagatas became disunited and divided into two parties in mutual strife and conflict, quarreling and wounding each other with wordy weapons. Thou dost not understand this doctrine and discipline, I, but I do understand it. How should thou understand it? Thou art in the wrong, I am in the right, I am speaking to the point, thou art not. Thou sayest last what should be said first, thou and first what ought to come last. What thou hast so long excogitated is quite upset. Thy challenge is taken up, thou art proved to be wrong. Be gone to get rid of thy opinion or disentangle thyself if thou canst. Truly the Naganta's followers of Nataputta were out with things to kill. Even the lay disciples of the white robe who followed Nataputta showed themselves shocked, repelled, and indignant at the Nagantas. So badly was their doctrine and discipline set forth and imparted, so ineffectual was it for guidance, so little conducive to peace, imparted as it had been by one who was not supremely enlightened, and now wrecked as it was of his support and without a protector. So, um, again, it's describing another teacher from another school passing away. His disciples become disunited because of the lack of discipline that's imparted through the teaching. So even whilst he, he's alive, the other teacher, there's order, but um, that order d dissolves once he passes away. And it, it shows the actual limitations of the teaching um, that he shares because of that. Um, so then they, there's consultation with the Buddha. Um, and so the Buddha explains that the teacher is not enlightened. Um, and again, it's similar to the teaching of the, 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 the teachers that are worthy of blame, that are blameworthy. Um, a teacher who has not won the discipline um, and, and um, the disciple who does not practice, um, the, te the teacher who has not won the discipline and um, well, uh, it's a little bit actually, it's a little bit different. <clears throat> So there's a, there's a little bit of a different dynamic here, um, whereby it's still the scenario of a, a teacher who has not won the the, the, uh, the discipline, uh, is not supremely enlightened, um, and there is a third party who is an advisor who's telling the student what to do, um, and. Buddha says, for somebody who advises such a student to follow the teacher, is, is that the person, the advisor, and the student um, are all worthy of, of uh, demerit. And So it's, it's basically the same scenario, but it's a, an advisor who talks to the student and, and the, 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 the evaluation is who is, who is uh, right. But the, effect, the effective point is that um, the, the emphasis of a teacher who is supremely enlightened, um, well set forth, um, that Basically, when the teacher is one who is enlightened and the, and the students follow, then there is honor, there is honorableness, there is honor in in that uh, in that discipline. Um, and, but then the Buddha says that even beyond that, there is one who has there is one who is arahat, supremely enlightened, um, and. 
it is when one has that type of enlightenment that even after um, passing from life, um, there is still a discipline that continues. Um, and there's a prescription that's very valuable that the Buddha provides here concerning the nature of um, the nature of a sangha, a, a spiritual community. What the what the components of that spiritual community are. Um, So, these are, this is a description of it, looking at uh, verse 14 through 15. Um, so, Basically, um, it's actually 15. S yet senior big shoes are there. Yet senior big shoes of mine are there, Kunda, who are disciples, wise and well trained, ready and learned, who have won the, the peace of the Arahant, who are able to propagate the benevolent Dharma, who, when others start opposed doctrine, easy to confute by the Dharma, will be able to, in confuting it, to teach the Dharma and its saving grace. And big shoes of middle age and standing now are there, Kunda, disciples of mine and wise. And novices now are there, Kunda, disciples of mine, and senior sisters now are there, Kunda, disciples of mine, and sisters of middle age and standing now are there, Kunda, and novices also, disciples of mine, and laymen now are there, Chunda, Kunda, householders of the white robe, men of holy life, disciples of mine, and amongst these are men of wealth, lay women are, now are there, Kunda, householders of the white robe, disciples of mine, and amongst these are women of wealth. And my religion, Kunda, is successful, prosperous, widespread, and popular in all its full extent, well proclaimed amongst men. So uh, basically, there are senior bhikshu, senior practitioners, um, particularly one who can inherit uh, the leadership of the Sangha. But senior bhikshus, middle, bi middle standing bhikshus, and um, novice bhikshus. Um, and then the same thing of the, the women, um, senior women, um, middle and novices and then there are laymen uh, and then amongst the laymen there are affluent laymen who can provide material support as well as lay women and affluent lay women um, and then in addition to that um, the aggregate of the of the sangha is prosperous so there's well-being there's comfort so those are the characteristics of a of a um, proficient uh, spiritual community um, The Buddha provides further dis, uh, guidance. Wherefore, Kunta, do you, do ye to whom I have made known the truth that I have perceived come together in company and rehearse all of you together those doctrines and quarrel not over them, but compare meaning with meaning and phrase with phrase in order that this pure religion may last long and be perpetuated in order that it may continue to be for the benefit and happiness, happiness of the great multitudes out of love to the world, to the benefit and the gain and the weal of devas and men. So then there is a repetition again. That that's verse 17. And 17 goes on to again state, uh, specific, specify the four onsets of mindfulness, the four supreme efforts, the four paths to efficacy, the five powers, the five forces, the seven factors of enlightenment, and the Aryan Eightfold Path. Um, that's the basic doctrine of the Buddha. Um, then the Buddha describes a methodology for addressing uh, critics. Um, and um, further discipline concerning uh, materiality. Uh, reference to the, the four jhanas. Um, there is an interesting uh, proclamation of um, something that the Buddha describes um, a spiritual, an arahant being incapable of doing, and there are nine things. He is incapable of deliberately depriving a living creature of life. He is incapable of taking what is not given so that it constitutes theft. He is incapable of sexual impurity. He is incapable of deliberately telling lies. 
He is incapable of laying up treasures for indulgence in worldly pleasure as he used to do in the life of a house. He is incapable of taking a wrong course through partiality. He is incapable of taking a wrong course through hate. He is incapable of taking a wrong course through stupidity. He is incapable of taking a wrong course through fear. The Buddha goes on to further provide further description of the teaching. Some of, again, it's, it's, it's a much of a summary of what he previously shares um, concerning the theologies. Re again, reference to the fourfold noble path. Um, the different speculations of others. Uh, and that pretty much is the conclusion of the sutta. And that continues on to the Lakana Sutta, which is numero 30. And uh, this is, again, titled The Marks of the Superman. There are the 32 marks. The distinction in this uh, section is that it's emphasized. And... Um, this one actually, I think, has multiple chapters, if I recall correctly, yeah. Um, and so each of the marks, each of the 32 marks is listed specifically. Uh, and then there's further detail uh, of each of the marks. And not only that, uh, there's a connection, there's a relationship between each of the marks of the Superman and the preceding discipline uh, um, that the person, the being, uh, practices in a preceding life to achieve those marks in this life. Um, so that, that actually, again, in each, in each, after each, uh, listing or each section that lists these in detail, there is poetry that basically summarizes, um, see each, each, uh, passage or each, um, each description, uh, that's chapter one. It continues with chapter two, uh, pretty much in the same way. Um, and it has, I mean, it, it relates generally to the teachings of the Buddha in terms of the, the, the discipline. The actual marks, again, is, some, is somewhat contrary to what the Buddha talks about in terms of getting too much caught up in the aesthetic. Um, but uh, the Buddha is addressing what the conditions are at that moment, what the custom is. And particularly emphasis on, is on the, um, the, the righteous behavior that precipitates those things. And there's a certain amount of insight concerning the those the the, the um, physiology of those marks um, and the acts the actions the righteous actions so um, but that's pretty much the gist of that sutta uh, continue on to the next numero 31 the sigala sigalovada sutta numero 31 31 that's up i heard the exalted one was once staying near rajagaha in the bamboo wood at the squirrel's feeding ground now at this time young sigala a householder's son rising betimes went forth from Rajagaha and with wet hair and wet garments and clasped hands uplifted, paid honor to the several quarters of the earth and sky to the east, southwest and north to the Nadir and the Zenith. So the Buddha observes this, this uh, young brethren um, making these uh, gestures and um, provides the brethren with guidance about how to properly make um, to meditate um, in the in the four directions of the earth, um, and again, there's a connection between uh, these this practice and the discipline, the the, the virtues. Um, So the Buddha says that the first thing to do is to, to, to get rid of the four things, uh, the four harmful behaviors, the destruction of life, taking what is not given, licentiousness, and lying speech. Uh, these are the four vices of conduct that he has to put away. That's looking at verse 3. Tres. Um, Their further description of, of uh, discipline, behavioral discipline, um, and uh, the the, the uh, guidance for a householder uh, in terms of having wife and children. Um, meditating on the well-being of the members of the household. And how to cultivate righteousness, righteous behavior that is optimally beneficial for a household.
there are descriptions of the characteristics of friends, um, how to discern what appropriate friendship is, the behavior of appropriate friends. And I recall that each of these is a specific direction of east, west, north, and south, or east, south, west, and north. Um, I didn't see it at the beginning, but and they're, they're, they're the six quarters that the Buddha describes. Um, oh, here it is. Um, so here it is, verse 27. Um, and how, O oh, young householder, does the Aryan disciple protect the six quarters? The following should be looked upon as the six quarters. Parents as the east, teachers of, as the south, wife and children as the west, friends and companions as the north, servants and work people as the nadir, religious teachers and Brahmins as the zenith. Um, so there's there's an or, there's a there's a specific connection between that particular relationship, which is very similar to the Kung Fu uh, um, uh, relationships, Wu Lun, the five relations, um, and the orientations of the four directions, particularly from native traditions. So um, interesting uh, con connection there. Uh, but even further, um, the Buddha describes how each of these, in each of these directions, one should meditate, and, and what principles, what characteristics one should be um, mindful of in 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 uh, in these specific ways. Um, so th there are further details, and there are some uh, prose, some poetry that provides repetition of these. And that's how the sutta concludes. Um, and that continues on to the Atanatiya Sutta of uh, chapter or, or Sutta 32. So this is the ward rune of Atanata. Um, so again, thus have I heard the Lord was once staying near Rajagaha on Vulture's Peak. Now the four kings, having set a guard, a screen, a patrol over the four quarters with a great army of Yakas, of Gandabas, of Kumbandas, went up to Vulture's Peak when night was distantly spent, lighting up the whole mountain with their effulgent beauty. And there they saluted the exalted one and sat down at one side. So then the um, the the leader of the of the tribe or the leader of the the contingent uh, addresses the exalted one um, and says that there are, there are there are angels uh, beings that that honor the exalted one. They're ones that that are envious and don't like are hostile to the exalted one. Why is that? And the exalted one says. Um, The Exalted One teaches a code of abstaining from the taking of life, from theft, in chastity, lying, and intemperance. But for the most part, Master, fairies, yakas particularly, do not abstain from one from any one of these things. To them, such a code is distasteful and disagreeable. So basically, the Buddha teaches a doctrine of righteousness. Many of these beings do not like that, and because of that, they are hostile towards the, the Buddha. So then the, the, the leader of the contingency the, of the angels um, tells the Buddha that um, that his practitioners go into quiet places in the forest and these beings are, in, are right there. So for, for, for well-being, um, he's teaching the Buddha this song so that uh, beings uh, are, are dissuaded from causing harm to the practitioners of the Buddha. So then the, the angel goes on to recite this song. Uh, then um, the Buddha goes on to, th to, his, uh, to his sangha, to the, to the bhikshus, um, and, and relays the song back to them, particularly verbatim. And that's the sutta. And then we get into the Sangiti Sutta. Um, this is numero trenta tres, and this is a recital of the numbers. So here we go into the, the numer not numerology, but it's, it's a sequence or an organization of teachings by numbers. So it begins, Thus have I heard the Exalted One was once making a tour in the country. It should be the number, yeah, okay. The Exalted was once making a tour in the country of the Malas, accompanied by a great company of, by a great song of the brethren, numbering about 500. And he arrived at Pava, the Mala capital. There he resided in the mango grove of Kunda, the smith. Um, so then there's a, new, there's a new hall that has been built. It has not been utilized, and they request the Buddha to utilize it to honor, honor the hall. So the Buddha arrives, um, and so then the Buddha sees that it's a beneficial night to have a discourse. And so the Buddha actually solicits, um, well, he gives, the, he gives the, the hosts a talk, and then after that talk is done, the, the Vasetas leave. 
um, the, or the, I should say, uh, the Pavamalas, they're referred to as both. Um, and then after they leave, the Buddha is still like, yo, it's still, it's still the, the, the Sangha here, who's gathered in this hall, um, is still awake. So let's have a further discourse. So he solicits his disciple Sariputta to provide a further discourse. So this is Sariputta who provides this discourse, and it is the discourse of the numbers. Um, and with verse 7, Sariputta says, um, then the, uh, the, the, the narration is, that then the Venerable Sariputta addressed the brethren. The, the Nagata Nataputta, friends, oh, mm. so continuing on again in verse 7, it says, but to us, friends, the Dharma has been well set forth and imparted by the Exalted One. It is effectual for guidance, conducive to self-mastery, and is imparted by one perfectly enlightened. Herein there should be a chanting by all in concord, not a wrangling, that thus this holy life may persist and be long maintained. That may be for the well-being and the happiness of many folk, for compassion on the world, for the benefit, the welfare, the well-being, the happiness of devas and of men. Uh, so then um, Sariputta provides a recital about um, a number doctrine. So it begins by saying, what is the single doctrine? All beings persist through causes. All beings persist through conditions. This single doctrine, friends, has been perfectly set forth by the Exalted One, who knows who sees. Hereon there should be a chanting in all in concord, not a wrangling, that thus this holy life may persist and be long maintained. It continues on. Then, it, then sorry, that's verse 8. And then in verse 9, uh, Sariputta says, There are double doctrines, friends, which are perfectly set forth by the Exalted One, who knows who sees. Hereon there should be a chanting in concord for the benefit of devas and men. There's some abbreviation in that articulation. Uh, and those doubles are mind and body, ignorance and craving for rebirth, false opinion as to rebirth and no rebirth, unconscientiousness and indiscretion, conscientiousness and discretion, contumacy and friendship with evil, suavity and friendship with benevolence, proficiency as to offenses and restoration from them, proficiency as to attainments and recovery from them, proficiency in elements and in understanding them, proficiency in the 12 spheres of sense and in the 12 factors of the causal formula, Proficiency in assigning specific causes and in eliminating elements that are not causal in a specific effect. And it continues on with a further long list. Uh, then in verse 10, it continues on with these numbers. There are, friends, triple doctrines perfectly set forth by the exalted one who knows who sees. Hereon there should be a chanting in concord, even by all not a wrangling, which are these. So then the triples, triplets, three bad roots or conditions, greed, hate, and dullness, three benevolent roots, disinterestedness or equanimity, love, and intelligence. Uh, three kinds of evil conduct to it in act, word, and thought. Three kinds of fine conduct to it in act, word, and thought. And it continues on in, in, in triplets. Um, and some of these are some of the basic teachings. Some of these are new are the basic teachings with further details. Uh, but it goes on a long list of, of triplets. And then um, uh, there are some that are further, I mean, for each each may find further resonance with some of these triplets. Um, there, there are some that are rather uh, insightful and helpful. Um, but there's a long list of, of these three. So uh, rather than saying all of them, I'm just going to reference them generally. It goes into fourfolds. Uh, fourfold doctrines, friends, with verse 11. Fourfold doctrines, friends, have been perfectly set forth by the exalted one who knows who sees the Arhat Buddha Supreme. And then, again, um, different, different teachings and groupings of four. Um, that our long list further involved um, and uh, continuing on. Uh, then it goes into, uh, that's the end of the first chapter. Then the second chapter begins with fives. There are fivefold doctrines, friends. Um, groupings of five are, are shared and uh, further involved. Again, some of these are the basic teachings repeated. Some of these are further details of the basic teachings. Some of these are new insights. Um, that are generally related, but even perhaps for many further resonant and, and valuable. It goes into sixes, it goes into sevens, uh, goes into eights. Ocho, this is chapter three. Um, chapter two be ends with sevens, and then chapter three, chapter three begins with eights. Ocho. Um, and again, further, further involved, further, further detail. Um, and then it goes into the nines, the nueve, and then it goes into the diez. Um, and that is, that is the gist. So um, pretty much summation of some of the teachings that are shared before. Um, and that is it. That brings us to the concluding sutta, not numero 34, the, the Dasutara Sutta, the Tenfold Series. So this is another uh, sequence of, of numbering. 
Um, but the, the distinction of this one is that um, there are tens. There, there are ten categories um, that are listed, and uh, it stays consistent throughout this, uh, this, this uh, delivery, this presentation. So the, 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 the ten categories um, are described, and then once those ten categories are described, um, there are um, specific teachings um, according to those categories, teachings by, by, numbered by one, teachings by, by twos, teachings that are tripled, teachings that are quadrupled, um, all the way to uh, teachings that are grouped by uh, tens, I think. Yeah, so it goes, it's ten by ten. So I will articulate what those ten categories are, and then uh, again breeze through the actual numbers because it becomes further, it becomes longer. So um, again, this is Sariputta who is addressing the brethren and providing this this uh, summary of the Buddhist teachings, and we we begin with verse two. Um, there is one thing, friends, that helpeth much. One thing that is to be developed, one thing that is to be understood, one that is to be eliminated, one that belongs to disaster, one that leads to distinction, one that is hard to penetrate, one that is hard, one that is to be brought to pass, one that is to be thoroughly learned, one that is to be realized. Which one thing helpeth much? Zeal in things that are benevolent. Which one thing is to be developed? Mindfulness with respect to the bodily factors accompanied by pleasurable feeling. Which one thing is to be understood? Contact as a condition of intoxicants, asavas. And of grasping which one thing is to be eliminated the conceit I am <clears throat> which one thing belongs to decline disorderly thinking which one thing leads to distinction orderly thinking which one thing is hard to penetrate immediacy of secession in mental concentration which one thing is to be brought to pass sure and unshakable knowledge which one thing is to be thoroughly learnt? all beings are maintained by causes which one thing is to be realized sure and unshakable emancipation of mind now, these ten things are genuine, true, thus not otherwise, not different, perfectly comprehended by the Tathagat. So from that, it goes on to saying, there are two things, friends, that help with much truth that to, are to be developed, dot, dot, dot. Um, and then listing the, those, those couplets. Uh, so we can look at the, um, the nature of these categories um, and see some, some uh, binary uh, uh, experience, um, but then also a, a, progressing, a progressing significance um, which one thing helpeth much, which one thing is to be developed, which, which one thing is to be understood, and then which one thing is to be eliminated, which one thing belongs to decline, which one thing leads to distinction, which one thing is hard to penetrate, which one thing is to be brought to pass, which one thing is to be thoroughly learnt, which one thing is to be realized. So um, I'm going to let those, those nuances speak for itself because that's the conclusion of the Diganakaya and Volume 3. Alhamdulillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Allah wa Pa. Tao ke, tao fe chong, tao ming ke, ming fe chong, ming ja rastafari. Deus nos de ki es en chale, santo fe kito nomen tu, vahe gus, amen. Baruch ata Elohim, Elohim no melech elam, asher kasan lo ba mitzvotat, zivan lo mesok bedevrei Torah, amen. Kiri eleison, seva mas tu savajikatahi, sabe sata bavantu sukitata, vagabiyam, aqua ba upendo na aman, fakiri nesalami, chinta dan peramen, li bav me womajakam, umbuto shabana fakitu. Shishe, tamasanida, domo aragato, telema yellow wakata, tepa do kashengu, gold medigan, God, we thank you for all that you bless us. Ata jam ya yata kimani, medo, meho, om shanti shanti shanti, amen. All thanks and praise to the Most High Elohim. Respect and honor to all our ancestors, all our prophets, all our sages, past and present, known and unknown. Respect and honor to His Majesty Hasselassie. Respect and honor to Her Majesty Wise Aramun. Blessed love and peace in Rastafari. One perfect love. Namaste. Assalamu alaikum. Madou.